today we're actually yep. going to be speaking about 5G and its mm. uh, it application, in, especially in the industry. Yep. So something that's really cool, I think, about 5G, a lot of people maybe don't know yeah. the difference in terms of speed. Yep. So for 5G, it can transfer data up to like, the speed is about like 10 gigabytes uh, per second. Mm -hmm. So essentially what it can help to do is that it can help to yep. power uh, self-drive cars. Yep. You know? The autonomous cars. Do, yes. It can also help in the uh, healthcare industry. Yes. Do remote uh, surgery. Remote surgery. Even in the agricultural industry where mm -hmm. it can actually beef up, you know, how you monitor and how you surveil, you know, all these kind of things. I mean, there's a lot of applications exactly. that comes with it. It's not just about you having the best uh, FaceTime experience exactly. or sending that WhatsApp out, you know, downloading that video. It, no. It's more than that mm -hmm. and hence why we have the best person to talk about the applications of 5G and where we are with it. We have you together in the studio, Shamsul Izhan Abdul Majid, Chief Technology and Innovations Officer of MCMC. Assalamualaikum Sam, good morning. Waalaikum salam and thanks for having me. Right. Happy so Father's much. Day to you. Yes. yes, same to you. Everybody yep. else. Everybody yeah, else as well. Sure. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Proud father of one and of four. Four cats. <laughs> four cats. Four cats and one, one, one daughter. Yeah, one daughter. Yeah. There you go. Uh, all right, Let, let's kick things off, Shahi. We, we just want to clarify a bit, mm -hmm. I mean, for those who are maybe not sure what actually is 5G because, again, we had that whole transition of GSM. We had Edge. We had a 3G. We had mm, 3.5 yeah. and then 4 and then 5. What does all these numbers mean? What what all this generation means, uh, share with us a bit on that, uh, Sam. Sure. So 5G, as, as the name says, is the fifth generation mm -hmm. of uh, this whole technology. And back in 2018, mm -hmm. the government felt that we should actually start to embark on this. Mm -hmm. And there were a national 5G task force, there were technical tests, uh, mm -hmm. trials and showcase to, so that we can start to understand how do we implement 5G for the, for the country. Mm -hmm. 5G becomes or has the potential to become the foundation for many, many new things mm -hmm. mm. as part of the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah, especially with the introduction of so many newer technologies like AI, um, self-driving cars. I mean, IoT, the list goes on yeah. and on even. Um, yeah. And it goes across, uh, like we said, we mentioned not just one industry. Mm. It goes across like every yeah. every industry, right? Is that correct or are we wrong in this? Yeah, so when um, MCMC started to work, to put this on the table and mm. invite the industry players, mm -hmm. uh, we put together a 5G demonstration project and that basically lasted about nine months in Langkawi. And mm -hmm. that nine months saw uh, nine vertical industries, uh, 71 different use cases mm -hmm. uh, okay. covering things like um, mobility, transportation, healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, education, and many, many more. So this basically demonstrates that 5G is able to change a traditional sector, mm -hmm. a sector that today may not see any any difference, but mm -hmm. when 5G is there, yeah. they will see a lot of change happening in their in their pipeline. Yeah, I guess that has to be the rationality of why the government is, is, is you know, really moving forward, really investing its time and effort and money as well in making sure that Malaysia is part of that. Malaysia is not being left behind when we talk about the advancements of technology, when we talk about 5G. Right? Exactly. So, um, a big element here is in investment. Investment by people who see the future of, uh, of the industry. Mm -hmm. So by Malaysia and, and the various industries um, diving into the various use cases, it makes the country more appealing for mm -hmm. in investors, mm -hmm. uh, makes the country more of a competitive nature compared to our neighbours. Mm -hmm. And it also creates that new job skills mm -hmm. that we really need to see yeah. so that our country is not left behind. But speaking of which, I want to know, um, maybe you can explain to our audience, what are some of the benefits of having 5G and why do the, why did the government encourage uh, for us to, you know, hey, we need 5G right now, if not, we're going to be left behind. Yeah. Um, so can you explain in layman terms to our audience out there yeah. who are like, maybe wondering, if hey, my phone no 5G lah. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not, I'm not transferring like, you know, yeah. a lot of data at this moment. But of course, again, we're talking about like, it's industry application, it's mm -hmm. industry uses. We want to think about the bigger picture that other yeah. than our smartphone. Exactly. Yeah. So why do we need to embrace 5G? So apart from um, consumer uh, approach where you buy a 5G smartphone, actually the whole domain is going into higher capacity, mm. faster speed, and it's a doorway into innovation. Mm -hmm. So we will see, because of the innovation a thinking in 5G, there'll be a lot more use cases that businesses, government, uh, will be able to build new applications on top of the 5G network. Mm -hmm. So the, and by building this new application, 
companies and government creates new jobs, mm -hmm. um, able to then sell new products and services globally and to the global industry. And well, uh, ultimately, Malaysia will be a, a big dot on the map mm -hmm. that yeah. we are advanced in the way we do our processes and mm -hmm. the way that companies adopt automation as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, because, because again, I mean, like we have to embrace this because again, like you said at the beginning of the uh, topic, to entice investors out there, you know, like getting them to come in that Malaysia, hey, we are ready. We have all this infrastructure. Yep. We have all of this technology. All you have to do is just ride on with us and, and let's move forward. Because again, the application of it, it, I mean, like uh, by, by hook or by crook, I mean, like whether it is obvious or not, it does contribute a lot to the digital economy of the nation. And yeah, we better get on board uh, on this. Yeah, yeah, so the example we saw from the 5G demonstration project in Langkawi mm -hmm. that I mentioned yeah. is, mm -hmm. um, is to validate one use case where um, first respondent ambulance mm -hmm. uh, uh, taking a patient to the hospital. As that uh, transport is happening, the medical specialist in the hospital is receiving mm -hmm. medical information mm -hmm. from the ambulance. Sure. So this prepares uh, a faster response time for the patient mm -hmm. um, uh, without looking at documentation too much. Yeah. We, we also saw hospitals and hospitals, uh, Alosta and Langkawi talking to each other mm -hmm. uh, to perform more diagnosis, sharing of yeah. videos, mm -hmm. sharing of clinical data. Right. So this opens up <coughs> a lot of um, in, uh, opportunity and investment mm -hmm. and uh, excites investors okay. in, the, in the traditional sense, uh, in the traditional sector so that they can you know, move it forward. Yeah. All right. Sorry, actually, before, before yeah. you go, sorry. I just want to ask that, yeah, you said that there, there were, you know, we could communicate between hospitals yeah. and whatnot. How, uh, how is it with 5G that it is different, it is better in comparison to what we have previously, for instance? How does that make things better in regards of communication, in regards of talking to one another? Maybe you can just explain that a bit. Yeah, for, on the technical side, 5G has... Uh, three DNAs. Mm -hmm. The first DNA is um, EMBB or Enhanced Mobile Broadband, meaning the pipe is really big. Yep. Okay. So therefore, you can transmit videos mm. real time, you can transmit uh, metaverse and mm. many more things uh, to, to each other. Okay. But the other two is where it, it makes a difference. All right. uh, very low latency, okay. meaning that the packets move between A and B the fastest ever. So things like um, uh, robotics, AI, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the operator is one area and the robot is another area. Mm -hmm. When you move your finger, the robot moves within half a millisecond. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's the second part, uh, which has a lot of potential in terms of robots and automation. Mm -hmm. And the third part uh, is massive machine to machine, meaning millions of devices connected to each other and to 5G. So imagine a factory floor, instead of having human workers, mm -hmm. they have lots of automated robots doing their work at a very low latency mm -hmm. and sucking in video analytics, yep. AI, data, data and uh, ultimately uh, changing the way people do their work and businesses do their, their work as well. Yep. All right, I'm yeah. actually very curious, where are we at in Malaysia in terms of uh, our 5G uses and its application as compared to our neighbouring countries, for example. Let, let's pick... I, I, uh, you want to pick Singapore, pick, really? I want to pick Singapore. Let's do Singapore. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because um, it's the closest, right? Yeah. Uh, Singapore, Thailand, Thailand. Yeah. Indonesia. Um, Indonesia. Yeah. So our neighbouring countries. Where are we at in comparison to our neighbouring countries? Yeah, so uh, businesses all over the world, they compete with each other, mm -hmm. yeah, but they also need the local climate mm -hmm. to, to be better at what they do. So mm -hmm. we saw in Singapore, um, the government, uh, IMDA, which is equivalent to MCMC, and also the telcos there, they go into use cases like manufacturing, uh, ports, industry, mm -hmm. um, uh, drones, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is in collaboration with the businesses, uh, telcos, and the government. Malaysia, we have already gone into the oil and gas uh, industry, uh, and there are many more use cases that are in the pipeline where we see businesses stepping up. Mm -hmm. They are realizing that 5G, if is being done by my competitor in another country, I can do it in Malaysia as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines are all racing yeah. to kind of uh, bring up that benefit of and the promise mm -hmm. of what 5G offers to businesses. So it is beyond uh, you and I buying a 5G phone. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. it's beyond. It's yeah. not as simple as that. And then complaining that hey, my phone don't have 5G, yeah. la, You know. Yeah. yeah. If <laughs> I'm not beyond. mistaken, if I'm not mistaken as well, I might be wrong on this. You, you, you please correct me if I am. Uh, our uh, terminal, terminal one, terminal two, we're also using 5G, no? 
Are we are we there already or? Uh, you mean the, the airport? Yeah, the airports. Yeah. So um, when it comes to where can you get yeah. five five G? Yeah. So as of today, uh, Malaysia has about close to sixty percent five G coverage mm -hmm. at populated areas. Mm -hmm. So and uh, KLA and KLA one and two could be transmission of five G from the outside, mm -hmm. uh, transmitting in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our aim by end of this year, we should have eighty percent five G coverage at populated areas. Populated so, areas. Yeah. So not just the airport. Yeah. You know, shopping mall. Yeah. and on the highways and yeah. many others. You about, they actually yeah. get coverage in Tanjung Malim actually, 5G. Ah. You'll be surprised because it's close to Proton City. Ah, <laughs> that makes sense, that I makes sense. So. What about the non-populated cities then? Um, would they be able to enjoy the benefits of 5G or will they be able to... Because at the end of the day, it's very re relative to where yeah. the connections are also, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so will the non-populated cities be able to enjoy this maybe Soon. in the next two, three yeah. years? Yeah, so the aim is for mm -hmm. everybody yeah, to get everybody. 5G, mm -hmm. populated or not. Mm -hmm. The definition of populated area is 20 people per square kilometre okay. as, of, as of now. Okay. So... Uh, when everybody gets 5G, mm -hmm. ultimately, then 5G is going to be something that everybody lives with every day. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether you are in a kampong area mm -hmm. or whether you are in KLCC mall. Mm -hmm. uh, if 5G is there, therefore you can do video call or maybe you know um, augmented reality to yep. to your big classes. Yep. You can you can have a factory in your kampong area. Mm -hmm. So. All this requires pre-planning and also uh, by the industry and with the government, mm -hmm. but also to to make sure that the business outcome is there. Yep. Yep. Uh, because 5G investment requires, uh, 5G requires investment by yep. many uh, sectors, banking and investors, and they need to see that by putting one ringgit in 5G, for example, yep. they get two ringgit from a business angle. Yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah, okay. So, we, we, we want to talk again back on the applications, mm -hmm. on the usage of it. Because earlier, again, I mean like, what, what do we know? What does Zoe and I would know? I mean, we just, you know, pointed out, okay, you can do with autonomous uh, vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, medical and whatnot. Robotics. So, maybe you can share with our audience a bit more about its application on the industrial part. Really what people, they may not know before, much. Like, oh, actually that uses 5G, yeah. you know, those kind of things. Yeah. So, share with us. Yeah, so one example is perhaps in oil and gas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where it's quite common for engineers to fly in a helicopter and fly onto the offshore yeah. plant. Yeah. But it also means that uh, that particular process takes time, mm -hmm. is dangerous. Uh, what if the engineer remains on shore, remains at the HQ, for example, mm -hmm. but they can perform the same inspection work, industrial work, okay. uh, and uh, and that work is done by robots, for example, mm -hmm. by sensors. So hence why 5G is about Internet of Things, meaning having many, many sensors, working with each other in a remote area. It's also having the idea that automation can come in more. Mm -hmm. uh, we also see in some other countries where uh, it's uh, flying of drones mm -hmm. uh, it, to perform inspection remotely. Yep. Uh, the healthcare example that I mentioned, ambulance sending data back. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, metaverse, that's, that's one area where you can transform, uh, bring yourself into a new world of yep. living uh, <laughs> beyond social media. Yep. Uh, and um, autonomous vehicle where cars talk to cars mm -hmm. instead of just cars talking to yourself, yeah. so mm -hmm. cars can communicate cars because of the latency. Mm -hmm. Very low yeah. latency means that the data is moving so fast yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, devices can react much faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The difference. Uh, can you share with us the difference? So I remember that five G tra uh, transfers about ten gigabyte of data per second, right? What about four G? Want to do a little bit of comparison yeah. here, so it's, that people know. It's generally five G. It's about a hundred times faster. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Ge generally, yeah. but in a in a in the lab sense, uh, yeah. but in real world sense, yeah. you know, we are talking about there might be obstacle. You yeah. are, might be behind a tree in a building. Yeah. So, but generally, five uh, G it's fifty or hundred times faster yeah. than than four G. You know what I usually like to do whenever you know because my my cousin has uh -huh. a five G access phone and he she uh, he has a five G. The first thing I would yeah. do is I would just open up speed tests. Yes. Just to check out yes. the data transfer, how fast one can be, and actually can go up to about five to six hundred megabytes per second. Megabits per, megabits per, per second. Yeah. second uh, yeah. I think when it first got launched uh, about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. from yeah. a commercial point of view, um, subscribers were getting close to a thousand mm -hmm. uh, on the five G, a thousand megabits. Uh, if they go back to four G, they were getting eighty yeah. megabits. So it's like tenfold. 
Yeah, right. there's a lot of difference there. A yeah. lot, a lot. Not even like, it's not even a gentle number where it's yeah. like twice the speed. No, it's like almost 100 times the speed. Uh, so we're, in terms of where 5G is going to bring us uh, uh, Malaysia, right? Uh, two, three, two, three, let's say, let's say within the year even, because mm. we're trying to cap from 60 to 80 here, right? Yeah. By the end of the year. Yeah. So where are we maneuvering here? Where is 5G going to bring Malaysia? Yeah, so um, we aim for 80% populated coverage by end of mm -hmm. this year. And then from there on, uh, recently, uh, YB Minister for Communication mm -hmm. uh, mentioned that there will be a new uh, network uh, from a dual network point of view where we find where we see that they, they will be new players. Mm -hmm. uh, when What does it mean? It means that uh, people may get uh, cheaper 5G mm -hmm. services, may get more packages mm. uh, that you can subscribe to. Yep. Uh, of course, better coverage. Mm -hmm. And we are also hoping that uh, government and businesses will also then have more option and more opportunity to adopt the industrial use cases or mm -hmm. perform new products and services on yeah. top of the 5G network, create more jobs, mm -hmm. yeah. create new products that can be sold globally and locally as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because the, the whole idea of it, yeah. having that, that arsenal of weapons in our hands yeah. to actually face mm -hmm. the future, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that we're not just thinking of ourselves, but we can actually help the company grow, you know, uh, exponentially yep. throughout yep. and together with all of these tools at hand. But all we need is just the tools right now. So exactly. hopefully we are able to actually get the tools as quickly as we possibly can. We're running, uh, almost running out of time, but we do want to give you a chance, uh, Sam, to just share with our audience. Again, we, we've already, you've already spoken about the expectations on Malaysians over there, mm -hmm. but you as a Malaysian yourself. Yeah. Um, so how should people embrace this technology and what should they use? Mm -hmm. How should they use it moving forward? So, um, in particular processes, <laughs> we find that there's a lot of processes these days that uh, surround us are very manual. Mm -hmm. So be open to digitization, okay. automation, mm -hmm. and this is all part of the fourth industrial revolution which the whole world is moving into. Yep. I mean, the third industrial revolution, we we're talking about mechanized, you know, mechanical mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. Today, We've done that. Today, data, robots, yep. and AI, chatbot, I, and yep. uh, yeah. open uh, chat GPT. So this brings a whole new economy. And what I would like to actually uh, tell everybody is to embrace the technology. The window is 5G to go into it. Yep. Right. And once you get into it, allow the processes that you deal on a day-to-day -day basis to be automated because of the use of AI mm -hmm. and robots. And governments and businesses should also then re-evaluate the way we do things. Mm -hmm. uh, before 5G, maybe you're doing things in, in a certain way, yeah. but 5G can really open up new ways of doing things. Exactly. New ways of if doing it's like things. last time you had to do, t you had to submit like 10 different documents, yeah. now it's just you can cut it short and just send it over. Yeah. And that reduce the time yes. to reduce process, time. Exactly. reduce the time to decide on, exactly. on anything. No more, oh, boss, boss not in, <laughs> cannot, sign, cannot sign the check. Yep. It's like, nope, we have 5G, <laughs> yeah. it's immediately exactly. on your phone, you can transfer yeah. back in, in a couple of seconds. All so right. before we wrap up today's show, of course, we want to again give you the chance, uh, one last time, last to, one. to which, um, you know, uh, any of uh, your friends even, any of your fellow fathers out there, happy Father's Day and, you know, uh, where do you, what do you hope for, for fathers out there and, whether or not their kids will should subscribe to 5G <laughs> in 10 years time. <laughs> so happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Uh, I suppose we are the unsung heroes and uh, parents, uh, sorry, kids usually look up to fathers mm -hmm. on, you know, what's next? What should I do with, with my life? So don't forget 5G is the window that fathers can bring the family <laughs> into and uh, drive the family into more 4G or sorry, Fourth uh, Industrial Revolution yeah. space. Uh, there you uh, go, awesome. Shamsul Izan Abdul-Majid, Chief Technology and Innovation Officer of MCMC. Thank you so much for coming down, San. We Thank appreciate you. it. Happy Father's Day to you once again. Thank you. Thank you.